Hello there Pixel Pushers, Sadiq Hussain here with another uh, video tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at Bridge. Um, Bridge is the Adobe um, uh, Suite, uh, sorry, uh, Bridge is the Adobe uh, software for managing your images, and uh, your catalogue and of course your, um, uh, you, you know, your files on your computer in addition to the um, uh, filing system on on uh, which whether you're Mac or Windows okay so at the moment we're looking at so the, for this first one first first of three videos we're going to be doing on this first one this is the desktop version of the Mac computer and as you can see in front of you um, I've got two versions of Adobe Bridge downloaded uh, one is an older version and um, just going to update that as you can see that's been updated now and then um, uh, we'll update the second one but in fact what we're going to do is to delete the uh, earlier one because it'll prompt you do you want to replace the old one with the new one uh, and then delete the older version and that's what I'll do I'll actually get the Adobe Cloud platform to uh, enable me to do that and that's much um, smoother and simpler if you do that so if you just follow the um, uh, the on-screen uh, uh, pointer instructions, should be fairly clear to see what's happening. But let's just follow the um, the process here. Now I've got an Adobe account. I have done for some time because I've used been I've been a user of. Um, uh, a Photoshop for many many years and one or two of their other programs as well and although I've looked at Bridge before I've never really used it to any great extent so that's what we're now doing I'm going to go uh, wholeheartedly into Adobe Bridge as my image management software um, cataloging software organizing searching finding um, but uh, but my mate my preferred um, software for editing is Affinity Photo so don't use Photoshop anymore uh, but the reason why I'm using a, a Adobe Bridge is that it will link in with Affinity uh, and in fact any image editing software it will be fine with and you can see on here I'm just updating my profile while the updates happening in the background um, I can look at my profile and just go through what needs to be done Okay, so these are the different aspects of the um, Adobe uh, Cloud platform. Now, I don't subscribe to um, what Adobe has done with uh, uh, putting everything as a um, monthly account. And there you can see you can upgrade your free plan. Um, I'm on the free plan. I don't uh, use any other Adobe product anymore. Um, I don't use Photoshop. Um, I haven't used Photoshop for a number of years. I don't use any other other software. But in fact, Adobe Bridge is free. So you can download and install uh, Adobe Bridge for free, whether you sign up to their other software or not. Uh, but the key thing is you have to download the Adobe uh, Cloud platform first, um, because, of course, that's the platform from which they want to promote and sell other products to you you know whether you decide to um, uh, buy them or not or install them or not or trial them in fact and trialing them is absolutely fine that's entirely up to you I'm just updating my Adobe profile here while the um, uh, the uh, bridge is updating in the background so I might as well use that time um, in, in a valuable way so I'm just updating, adding my profile picture or a profile picture uh, and also look at my profile name um, and sort that out as well. So I'm just going, going to do that. And I, obviously I would advise you to do exactly the same thing. Uh, to create an Adobe account, it's very simple, just a, a name, an email address. And I've had that for years. Uh, but if you haven't got one and you want to get Adobe Bridge, which I would seriously recommend, it's certainly one of the, one of the better image management um, cat and cataloging software out there from a reputable organization, obviously Adobe, and, um, uh, and you can't go wrong with it. There are a number of free alternatives, but uh, this is free as well, uh, free third-party alternatives, but this is a free one as well. Um, 
and so I would definitely recommend you uh, whether you use Affinity Photo or whether you use any other image editing software or indeed if you continue to using um, Adobe Photoshop or a variation of it so as you can see I'm just uh, taking off the auto update um, yes we can update bridge that's fine uh, there's no uh, previous import settings to 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 worry about and yes i want to remove the old version as i said earlier i have got an older version on why keep um version 11 on when there's version 12 that we've just downloaded so you'll see in a moment the version 11 will be uh, deleted uh, in the background and then it will update version 12 which is exactly what we want to do and then it will launch into it so the process actually is very straightforward. I have to say that um, Adobe's um, uh, cloud platform, um, Cloud Uploader, is is very good. Um, uh, it's not clunky at all. It's a little bit slow to respond at times, and uh, and I've tried that on a faster machine. The, although this iMac desktop, twenty seven inch, is quite old. It's reasonably highly specced with RAM and and the um, the chip so uh, the cpu so it's not a slouch by any standards but obviously by modern standards it's not the fastest either so and it has got an ssd drive inside i mean the only uh, slight um, bottleneck could be is that i i, I don't um, run the internet via a, a network cable it is over wi-fi so clearly via network cable would be uh, quicker but but nevertheless um it's updating itself that we, I've never noticed a particular slowdown um, really in it but uh, so that's updated and we can just um, click on open uh, to open it and once we've done that uh, bridge will open for the first time and as you know if you're on a Mac uh, and it'll be similar to to Windows as well although I do find that Apple are very um, draconian uh, in, a, in, in a nice sense, obviously, uh, with their installation of third party apps and software. So they've just been extra careful about uh, where you download stuff from. So you'll, uh, you, you'll notice that you'll, you'll be asked for loads of different permissions. Uh, can the app do this? Can the app do that? Can the app have access to this folder, this folder, that folder, that location? Uh, and they're all legitimate um, uh, questions uh, asks because uh, that's where your photos will be your media will be and if you don't give it permission then there's very little point in having the the program in the first place but obviously read as you can see here adobe bridge is asking various questions uh, and apple needs to give you need to tell apple to give it permission and uh, would like to access so and so folders so just go through and do that as as it comes up if you're on a windows you'll have a similar uh, process uh, just go through that as well okay so now adobe bridge is opened and this is just the what's new section you can go through that obviously if you want to it might be better reading it afterwards after you've installed it rather than looking through it um, when you're trying to get familiar with the uh, with the basic interface of adobe bridge and certainly the interface and the ease of use is the main reason that uh, I'm uh, going to be using and demonstrating to you over the coming weeks and months uh, Adobe Bridge and uh, just says wants to access your photo library now at the top there you've got different workspaces so on the left you've got your file structure um, what's on your computer and um, on the top there you've got the different workspaces and really the essentials workspace which is the very first one is the one that most people use and it's the one that I'll, I will be using uh, but you can customize uh, workspaces if you don't quite like the way uh, essentially the workflow the way things look and the way uh, you move from one step to the next but I would start with essentials initially anyway before you start customizing or and going outlandish with one of the other workspaces that you can see at the top there in the, in the, in the um in the six categories and as you open each folder on the left hand side uh, you see the contents of each um uh, file as a thumbnail and then on the right hand side you've got the uh, preview window where you see the image um full size so to speak now you can change the relative 
widths and heights of the panes um, of the different windows to suit. Um, I mean, I think the middle uh, workspace area is possibly a little bit um, too large, so I would reduce the size of that. But that also partly depends on the screen size that you're using, whether you're on a laptop screen, a small screen, or indeed a large um, uh, dedicated display on your desktop. Okay, so these are the different workspaces and uh, you can have a look which one suits you. Like I said, I'm going back to essentials and this is just a group of photographs you can see and um, from a particular folder. You can scroll down, it's all very responsive. So this software is essentially looking at your file structure for where your images are and uh, it's not looking at the file structure of anything else just your images and as you open each one you see that particular image on the right hand side or you can open it up to uh, to view it now a bridge isn't an editor you need a separate editor whether that's photoshop or affinity photo or whatever your choice of editor is but um, uh, it's really a way of importing, organizing, cataloging, um, rating, starring, um, easy to, uh, and, and to make it easier to find uh, your images further down the line um, and also filtering images. Now on the top left here you've got favorites and your regular folder structure and of course your folder structure is what's on your computer but your favorite folders or areas would be something you can set um, uh, and customize that so the ones that you'd be using on a regular basis could be in your favorite so you wouldn't necessarily need to go into your folders uh, main structure but what I found is that those little tabs at the top left where it says favorites and folders I would expect to be able to move those so maybe I want folders on the left and favorites on the right but I would just be able to just drag that little tab to where I want it but uh, you can't you'll see that in a moment um, when I tried but uh, you can't do that which I found you know totally um, uh, inadequate really I mean in this day and age you should be able to customize and move tabs about quite easily you can do it in a browser you can do it in affinity photo and I do believe you can do it in Photoshop as well so why why in Photoshop and not in um, a bridge uh, but certainly I, I do it a lot in Affinity as you've seen me do when I've been demonstrating various um, studios or palettes as we traditionally call them. Um, so these are just some of the settings within Adobe Bridge. It's always worth going through and maybe tweaking them. You won't need to do a lot to them. You just go into uh, Preferences um, under Adobe Bridge or under the Edit menu if you're on a Windows computer and uh, you got a number of categories there on the left within the preferences most of them like i said you won't need to touch but it is well worth um, looking through them reading them and if you're not too sure look at the help menu uh, or look online or, or fire off a question to me um, in the um, in the comment section of the video and i'm more than uh, happy to get back to you uh, if i can help you on that okay so i you can see I'm just going through here and just uh, just updating it and uh, and this isn't any particular uh, you know golden rule or anything this is just what I think my preferences are are likely to to suit me and I might well go back in and change them at a later date uh, but but nevertheless it's uh, worth familiarizing yourself of um, like here the file type associations and so on okay so it's all very straightforward you could of course just continue to use uh, adobe bridge without having to change any of these preferences this is the interface so how do you want the um the uh the actual software to look the background as you can see i'm just changing the the nature of the gray uh, in the background a lot of modern software tends to keep the software interface quite bland and quite nondescript in its colors and not uh, garish and um, too colorful because of course it wants to allow you to show off your your content 
whether it's images, if it's a photo editor, or whether it's videos, if it's a video editor, or whether it's audio files, if it's an audio file editor, um, or it's a, a word processor, if you're uh, processing documents, creating and processing documents. Um, so here we can see uh, uh, the different um, uh, software that you can associate um, uh, with the with, with Adobe Bridge. Now, one of the reasons why I'm actually going to be doing two setup videos, uh, one is this one for the um, uh, Mac, Intel Mac, older Mac, Intel version um, desktops, and then the other one, closely following after this one, will be the new Apple Silicon M1 chip macbook air uh, one of the first ones that was released just over a year ago now nearly a year and a half ago in uh, november uh, 2020 and uh, how this bridge software fares running on that and uh, you might be surprised actually so uh, look out for that uh, next video in the next couple of days but uh, so we want to compare the two not just one's a laptop one's a desktop uh, but more importantly one's got a different fundamentally different chipset uh, and also um, uh, one is a newer uh, laptop uh, so you would expect it to be speedier and this one is a slightly older a desktop um, no slouch as i said but, but there is a difference okay so we're just looking at another group of photographs here of mine uh, from from abroad in uh, in pakistan and really all I'm demonstrating to you here is how Adobe Bridge looks and works. Okay, now once I've done these two setup videos, um, then I'll be doing a more in-depth on using Adobe Bridge to organize your images, to catalog them, to rate them, so you can search for uh, particular files, and also the, to work out a workflow that suits you. And I'll demonstrate my own workflow as I get more and more uh, familiar with it. Okay, that's great. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.